There's a saying in business, people don't buy what you say, they buy what you embody. And I think I, I'm embodying like sobriety and I'm showing them what that product looks like. like and they want to buy in, they, they, want to, they want sobriety because it looks like I'm healthier, I'm enjoying myself more, I'm more competent and capable to like do what I want to do. Like if I want to jump in the car and go to the beach, I haven't had too many beers or anything like that. Like, and um, I think the more that you can be an example of somebody who actually is present and not trying to medicate against reality, um, people around you will start to see that and it might take years, it might take a really long time because also it takes time just for yourself to buy into it. Um, if you've ever tried to go without your favourite drug of choice, you'll know this. Like if, you, if you've tried to do like a dry July and not drink alcohol for a month, you know like it's really hard in that month. It's really hard to stop drinking for like six months to 12 months because you, you just want to go back to the easy thing, like the thing that didn't take so much effort. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it takes time for other people to see the results, but it's because it takes time for the results to show up. Like it takes time for even yourself to feel it, to feel it as, as, as a significant change. And my buddy Matt asked me the other day about not drinking. He says, like, why don't you drink? And I, I, my response was like, the longer that you don't drink for, the more superhuman you become. Like, because you're not poisoning yourself. It is that simple. And we know that like beers and wines, especially um, quite often, they, they definitely increase, like alcohol increases your sensitivity to heavy metals and beers and wines especially have trace heavy metals in them. So you're actually poisoning your mind and your body with some of the most, the, the worst things for your mental health and for your, for your like peace of mind and balance. Um, so yeah, alcohol is like way more of a poison than people even begin to realize and you and it's another thing that you don't want to look at because you're medicated it's like that's that's the that's the journey that i've gone on because i've actually been um in reality and dealing with the issues and not like just trying to avoid them one way that i try not to avoid them is by like not taking drugs and alcohol but like there's so much more to it than that once you actually stop avoiding because we all the the main thing that we do is avoid because it's the easiest thing to do. Because if you can just avoid whatever the problem is, avoid the suffering, um, life goes on and eventually it won't be your problem anymore. That's like the mentality of people on earth right now. Like, I don't know. What I need to do is make some phone calls and find out what kinds of mental health positions are available in my community. And that's just overwhelming to me. And that's like, I'm like relearning how to be a person all over again over these past few years, because I used to just use prescription drugs and alcohol for everything. Like if I, if I felt like this, which I never would because I'd always be medicated already. <laughs> but like if I was like, oh, I've got to make some phone calls and I have resistance to it and I have all this anxiety, I'd just take a painkiller. And then I'd be like all fluffy and floaty and call a bunch of people and be really pleasant and like just sound like I've got my shit together and then like whatever has to happen would happen. And it's just, you can understand from that description, like why I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I staying sober? Like, why am I staying present like, while well, everybody else is just cruising through life on all these like amazing pharmaceuticals and like, everything that's available? Like, is it actually, is it actually worthwhile to stay sober? Like, is it actually worthwhile to, to be present and do all these things? Cause it's actually making my life a million times harder like when I look at it through this lens, I'm just like, life has been really, really hard while I've been sober and it's annoying.
<sighs> I'm sure that it's easy for somebody watching this to be like, oh no, it's good. Uh, even me watching this, I'd be like, no, it's worth it, man. It's worth it to be sober. Because like, it sucks in the present moment. It's harder in the present moment, but you're actually, you, you don't even realize how much more you're getting done because you aren't programming yourself to avoid. That's, that's the big thing. It's like the more you used external substances to manage your state, the more you're programming yourself to depend on those things and the more you're programming yourself to avoid feeling your feelings, to avoid thinking your thoughts, to avoid knowing what you know. And I, like, I think I said it in a journal recently, I, I know too much now and I can't like, there's no way that I could like go back in and just like, hmm. it, would, uh, it would feel so silly to like, to start drinking again and I don't even know, I can't even picture it. I can't even imagine what I would do, like how I would escape reality properly. Like, it seems like there is no escape. It seems like it just, it just it's so glaringly obvious now. It is, this is where the matrix analogy comes in. Cause I always joke about it with my friends, like um, the matrix movie, when they unplug from the matrix, it's like this real fucked up place. And I'm like, when I unplugged from the matrix, it's a beautiful, magical place. But right now I'm actually feeling that analogy of the matrix a little bit more strongly because it is beautiful and it is magic. But in a way it's like, I didn't have to deal with any of these problems before. Like I didn't have to deal with anything. <laughs> I could just like avoid it and medicate away everything and just live in an illusion fairy tale where nothing was my responsibility and I just played my little part. So I suppose there's that. But for the most part, I'm happy and I, I still think it's magical. It's just a particular perspective that I'm wearing today because I'm feeling a little bit like worn out and tired and I just want to figure out my, like my next steps are. Because I, yeah, I'm not going to continue the way that I've been going. And I suppose that it's been, like, that's already evident through the journals and through the fact that these journals are now the main focal point of my presence on the internet. Like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what I really want to do. And having that realization that I had yesterday that like, you can't just fucking do it. You can't just like brute force your way into the dream life. You have to be strategic about this. You have to do like, uh, because what ha ended up happening and I talked, this is the whole journal from yesterday, like is that I ended up in this self deception where I was telling myself that I was doing what I loved. And I like, I was telling myself that I'm doing work in film and photography and I love film and photography so I love what I do but really I was doing stuff that I didn't love and lying to myself and yeah so now I don't even want to do film and photography at all. I want to do my film and photography and shoot things that I want to shoot but like I've actually come to this realization that I don't want to shoot shit for other people because I don't enjoy that. I don't love that. Um, unless like some dream perfect client comes along that I'm totally in alignment with that could work but like I can't force that I can't force my way into that so I've just got to go back to being who I really am and the best way to do that is to actually move away from doing what I love and start doing like something else like contributing it to society in another way that can still bring in income, but can actually take the pressure off my passion so that I can move back into loving it again.